We have a wonderful keynote speaker tonight. His name is Mr. Simarjeet Singh. And I asked him if I mispronounce in any manner, shape or form, he will let me know. He has a wonderful speech. It's called Influencing the Virtual World, Influencing in a Virtual World. Our keynote speaker is very impressive. Let me give you some of his highlights. He has 1.3 million subscribers on the YouTube and 14 years of international motivational speaking experience, serving more than 300 organizations worldwide. 80 nationalities has been served and he has been recognized in 2019 with this award, the Global Excellence Award. It's called the CEA in Motivational Speaking. He has been featured on the power list of the top 200 thought leaders to follow in 2021. He is one of the 10 top 10 motivational speakers in the world, in the virtual world. I would like to introduce to you Mr. Simarjeet Singh, the title of his speech, Influencing in a Virtual World. Mr. Simarjeet Singh. Thank you so much, Ron, for that kind introduction. Thank you. You know, I've only been here a few minutes and I've already learned something new. I love this, this, this little gesture that you've created. I love it. It's so interactive. What a wonderful bunch of people to uh, be among this fine uh, morning here in India and evening in your part of the world and what exciting times we live in. Um, I, I delivered a keynote um, on innovation in Vegas back in 2018 for an organization that's called Ideas America and I was one of the opening keynote speakers. I did get the opportunity to go on stage and say, hey, you know, uh, out of everyone who's traveled here from somewhere, your speaker today has traveled perhaps the longest distance and <laughs> I can make that claim today as well, but thanks to all the fiber cables and all the internet connections running deep below the oceans that make this technology possible. Isn't it an exciting world to live in? Yes. And I, I believe the possibilities are endless. And uh, thank you so much, Serena, uh, for coordinating for the several emails back and forth. Thank you, Ron, for the kind introduction. Thank you, Marcia, for having me. And, and, and um, I, I want to discuss from my own experience the transition into uh, being a virtual keynote speaker. The term is a little bit confusing for me at times when I introduce myself as a virtual speaker because I'm real, you know, so I have to say, you know, so <laughs> the way it's not a virtual avatar that I have, but um, we, we got to adapt and that's what we have to do. My colleague here is um, assisting me. His name is Chirag Narang. You'll see him somewhere among the Zoom meeting in the, in the names. He'll be doing, he'll be using a tool that we use for interaction. It is um, called uh, Mentimeter, so, um, which I love, by the way. Great for driving interaction. And um, so let's, let's begin by just asking all you wonderful people, which city are you logging in from? Chirag, over to you. Great to be among you. And uh, this is the first tool that I use very frequently. Recently discovered it. Great engagement tool. It's called Mentimeter to drive engagement. See, I believe we're, we're living in times when people want to connect with you, the speaker, the influencer more than ever before, and, and with each other too. We're craving that social connection. So any tool that involves people and makes their voice heard is going to highly increase your engagement for a virtual audience. When people feel they have been heard and they're involved, just like in a real presentation, um, they feel more part of the entire thing and they love that. So this Mentimeter, will share the link with you. Uh, I'll share a couple of other tools as well as we move forward, but this has proved very, very helpful um, to us. Before we go further, well, let's just uh, do this little energizer that I often practice. Let's do this. Stretch your arms out as far as you can. And inhale, take a deep breath in, inhale. And your hands in the namaste position. Hold your hands for a couple of, hold your breath for a couple of seconds, and then exhale. We do it one more time, preferably this time with a smile, nice big smile on your face. Once again, deep breath in, inhale. And hold your breath for a couple of seconds, and exhale. Now the third time, you do it as if you've just got a, a message on your phone which says you won $100 million in the lottery. Now show me that expression. <laughs> if you get that, fantastic. All right, once again, deep breath in, inhale. And hold your breath again for a couple of seconds and exhale, fantastic. Rub your hands together, rub your hands together. And a little bit more, come on, fast, a little bit more. 
Very good. And now rub your palms on your eyes. Very good. Take another deep breath in. And you could say out loud if you like, happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. I am indeed. Happy to be here. And fantastic. Happy to be here. Very good. Okay. So I talk about, uh, let me begin with the influencing in the virtual world and why, why I believe it's so important. Number one, I believe it's really important because you, your message People need to hear it now more than ever before. Through the entire uncertainty that the world is going through, we need leadership more than ever before. We need guidance, mentorship, people sharing their experiences. We need hand-holding. We need so many things. We have no idea about what other people are going through. And therefore, it's important that you make your voice heard. And if this, if this is a new medium to do it, so be it. And we can excel at it uh, because I believe I use the simple simple analogy always is the focus this lens magnifying glass right all of you might have had the opportunity of playing with it when you were little or you know you're just burning newspapers and things like that out out, out in the sun and I've, I've always done that and what i love about this is whatever i focus on expands it becomes more powerful right whatever i focus on it, it expands. So I, my mind has the ability to focus on a given challenge and find breakthroughs. And I think that's what is really important in the entire process when you're learning something new. And this is definitely new territory for many, many of us is to uh, look for breakthroughs is to as Alexander Graham Bell, I think he famously said, when one door is shut, there are a hundred others that are open at the same time. And one door is shut. There are a hundred others that are open at the same time. Problem is, most people focus and complain about the one door that has shut. They do not look at the other 10 that are opening at the same time, and therefore they miss out so many opportunities. And this is what we need to do. The great unfreeze change management experts divide the change process into three parts. The unfreeze, the change, and the refreeze. 2020 and COVID-19 was one of the biggest unfreeze ever uh, humanity has witnessed in recent times, right? Our entire model of how we work and live and for professional speakers and presenters, um, it, you know, everything was changed. And that that is a great unfreeze. This is my photograph from uh, one of the recent, one of my last presentations in person, uh, Feb 2020, I remember, in front of a crowd no less than 3,000 people, right? The, the universe has a sense of irony before, <laughs> before COVID-19 hit and say, hey, you know, no more, no more in-person presentations. And uh, that's when this, what you see on the screen, and I will give you a little tour of my studio as well. Um, so gearing up for the virtual world, this overnight transformation took uh, several months, 16, 18 months, and is still work in progress. And um, let this be our first affirmation. Take a deep breath in, please. Inhale. And you could say out loud, um, you know, I'm happy to be a work in progress, proud to be a work in progress. The, the, this is the mindset of people who are in uncertain territory. Yes, proud to be a work in progress. I'm not perfect. I'm not there. But I'm a work in progress. I'm learning all the time. And with that mindset, you're okay to make mistakes. You're okay to fumble. You, and, you know, and it's been a tough uh, time for so many people. I, I, I'm sure you've seen this video going viral online about this gentleman not knowing how to switch off his cat filter. Japantan, I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. Uh, you might want to... Uh, uh. Take we're trying look. to. We're tr can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's. I'm here live. That's not. I'm not a cat. <laughs> right. I can. I can see that. So <laughs> it was challenging. It has been challenging. But I think we should all pat ourselves on the back for, for doing the best we could under the given circumstances, right? Um, so th this little, shall I give you a quick tour of the virtual, um, my virtual studio? And then I want to explain certain key things which are very important in helping you improve your game uh, when it comes to uh, virtual presentations. Okay, so over to Chirag now. We'll switch the camera to, this, um, to another camera just to show you around very quickly. Um, okay, this is we are on the Logitech camera now. Uh, I think lighting makes a huge difference. 
Um, and I'll tell you all about the gear as we move forward. Now, please understand technology is an enabler. It does not replace you in any way. All of these things, are they're the um, cherry on the cake. They're not the cake itself, so all these additional things. Uh, I do use a separate large screen monitor which helps me just to make sure everything is decluttered. I've got your chat box open, several other things. I do have um, this wonderful gentleman here, Chirag, to assist me. And um, th that is, again, it's very important. Get some help, guys. If it's an important presentation, get somebody to assist you with screen sharing, um, typing in comments in the chat box, et cetera, et cetera. It takes a lot of load off your shoulders. We've got these acoustic panels um, decorated as paintings, but they are actually rock wool panels to absorb sound. So when it comes to improving the quality of sound, there are two very important factors. One is isolating outside sound, and the second is making sure that you're reducing the echo inside the room. You could have a very good quality mic but horrible sound if your room is empty. So getting in loads of carpets, upholstery, um, sound absorbing panels, etc. I'm also using a dual screen uh, on a teleprompter to maintain direct eye contact with you when I'm speaking. And this is this will take another separate keynote or workshop in itself because this is quite a detailed process. But we have this major issue. Raise your hands if you've also encountered this issue of uh, um, trying to maintain eye contact. Uh, yeah, while, while interacting, while you could either look at people or you could maintain eye contact. We found a way out of it, um, and um, I'll be happy to share with you. It's through a teleprompter using an iPad as a second screen. So the Zoom screen is in front of me. The camera is behind it. I am looking at you. I can see your expressions, and I'm also directly looking into the camera. So those, those were some of the things very, very quickly. I do want to check with this group. Have you delivered a virtual keynote or a workshop so far, or are you about to? Chirag, could you share the link, please, for the Mentimeter? Um, how many professional keynotes or workshops, not Zoom meetings, Zoom meetings don't count, but if you've delivered a presentation or a message or a TED Talk or something, let us know in the Mentimeter thing, and I have a few questions following that also. Okay, we got two people saying yes. No. Okay, about 50-50. Or if you have an important presentation lined up. Okay, great. So about 50-50 there. Chirag, could we move to the next slide, please? Which is about 50-50. And I would like to move to the next slide in Mentimeter. W what have been your biggest frustrations in delivering virtual presentations? Could you type a one-liner one in, please? Okay, great. Appearing to be reading. All right. <laughs> you could get used to that. Right, because it's so very convenient to have your script in front of you and read from it. And when we go back to the new normal, when we're actually on stage, like, okay, where are my notes once again? <laughs> right. Cecilia says, I've presented two YouTube presentations from my new channel. That's fantastic. What have been your biggest frustrations? Guys, I have appearing to be reading is one. Any other responses here in Mentimeter or in the chat box? Okay. Eye contact, uh, inadequate tech support, not being able to read audience gestures. Right, mm -hmm. not getting audiovisual feedback from the audience. Great, so I, I they do have a presentation, but we could stop sharing. I do have a presentation, but I also want to pick on some of these things. Um, encouraging people to switch on their cameras. Do you know how the Zoom, um, this window gallery view works? For folks who have their cameras on, they come on the front window. If you, have, if you have it split into more than one, if you have screen one, screen two, screen three, people who do not have their cameras on will not be on the first screen. So it's great, uh, you know, it's a great incentive for people to switch on their cameras because you as the speaker, you can interact with them and that could be a little incentive. For, for example, I could um, look, I can see that Douglas is taking notes right now. I love the um, fantastic background behind you, Zuling. Um, Lou Sanchez, um, is that, a, are you a surfer or are you a beach person? Um, so you could see, you could interact, and this is next very important tip. And Carl, I loved your mic. I think you're using a very good quality mic. Um, really important here, people want to be acknowledged. For you to incentivize participation, it's important that you acknowledge and involve them. You know, as, as uh, simple as somebody's login name. Hi, Hovi, welcome. 
uh, or somebody's background or you know their whatever they're using uh, get a conversation started make that connection people feel involved they don't feel they um, you know it's some person it's a pre-recorded now here's the thing I've also done a few pre-recorded keynotes as well you know 10 15 minutes sharp and precise just like a, a TED talk thing and people would know the difference whether it's live or whether it's be pre-recorded so people the, the other end your audience sometimes have received these pre-recorded messages too they want to know it's live and it is your responsibility as a speaker to ensure that you get you make it feel like give them that feel that it is a live event happening right so Jeffrey I know you really tuned in you're focusing and concentrating with your headphones on I love that thank you for being here everybody Okay, great. So uh, just a couple of lessons that emerged from this great unfreeze. So the three steps of the change process are the unfreeze, the change itself, and then the refreeze. That the refreeze is the unfreeze is very uncomfortable when we lose our old way of doing things. And then the change is also uncomfortable. And then when the refreeze comes in, that's when we start getting a little comfortable. And uh, so you do understand, please, it is going to be a painful process. But what do you do? I learned it from the goats in Morocco who climb trees because they cannot find the foliage uh, at the um, uh, ground level, so they adapt. They have this wonderful gift to adapt. They learn how to climb trees. This is not Photoshop, ladies and gentlemen. This is for real. These goats can climb trees because it's survival. Really? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> right. Right? So this is survival. Take a deep breath in, please. Inhale. And you could type it in the chat box. Survival is optional. <laughs> in fact, success is optional. You could do it now. You could type it in the chat box real quick, just as an affirmation. Success is optional. Survival is optional. They are not mandatory, right? And this is the beauty of um, adaptation. Not everybody can adapt. Not everybody wants to adapt. But that was phase one of my learning process. Some of the key uh, things that emerged from Phase one, um, could you guys mute, unmute yourself one by one and read out the key points? Phase one, my key learnings, number one was? Embracing. Embracing, embracing. thank you very much. Embracing, embracing, this has happened. Number two was? Detach from the past. Bruh, as much, as much as I loved the first class travel and the lounges and the free champagne and all those exotic locations, say, hey, you know, it's not here anymore. This is a new world and we've got to adapt to it. Number three, Redirect. Redirect. Thank you. Redirecting. Redirecting means to redirect my energy, my mindset. Instead of saying, why has this happened? What am I going to do now? The next thing to do is to ask yourself the right questions. That was really important at this stage. What can we do now? I'm stuck here and this entire world has changed. I used to speak a lot about the VUCA world, the volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. That was one of my keynotes. And then a VUCA world actually happened, <laughs> right? And then saying yes, it was really important. The, the same thing that brought you here today, ladies and gentlemen, think about your first speaking engagement, right? And um, type in one word in the chat box. How, how were you feeling before your first time on stage in front of a live audience? Type in in one word, please. I want to know. Nervous from Michael. Michael says nervous, right? Vomit, nervous, etc. A lot of us. And I want you to put yourself in the same position of uncertainty as Jeffrey just wrote in. The same position of uncertainty, right? By saying yes to this word, all of these virtual tools as well. That, that is what matters in this entire thing. And what was very helpful to me, ladies and gentlemen, was this um, Zen philosophy called Shoshin, which is the beginner's mind. Embrace the beginner's mind. Wonderful, because in the, in the Zen philosophy, they believe the expert's mind, there are only few possibilities. In the beginner's mind, there are several possibilities. And that's what we need to do. We need to start all over again. So come Feb 2020, it was 2007 for me all over again. 2007 was the year when I actually started my professional speaking career. So I was a beginner all over again into streaming softwares and so many other things um, and uh, learning all these things. So adopting a beginner's mind, start with what you have. That's very important, ladies and gentlemen. Start with what you have. You don't have to purchase all the expensive gear. I'm sure there are so many tools you already have available. It's how you make use of them. That's very important. An experiment. This is very important. Um, you know, that child inside you. Experiment, make mistakes, learn and improve. And remember, small is equal to big. Everybody take a deep breath in, please. Inhale. And say out loud, small is equal to big. It's the small things. Small is equal to big. 
Thank you, thank you. It's the small things that make a huge difference to, in improving your virtual game. The small things make a really big difference. What sort of small things? Engagement, whether it's through the Zoom chat box, whether it's asking people to unmute themselves, whether it's calling out people by their names, their logging names, or starting a conversation. Breakout rooms, raise your hands if you've used the breakout rooms function in Zoom. Excellent feature to get people involved. People want to connect with each other as much as they want to connect with you, and that's a great tool to facilitate that. Improving your lighting, it's not about getting the best camera, it's about improving the lighting of the room. Please keep that in mind. Um, when it comes to the sound, it's not about buying the most expensive mic there is. It is about also improving the acoustics of your room and the mic that suits your voice, right? So you don't buy just what everybody else is using, the Shure SM7 or the most expensive mics out there. Use the one that works for you, right? Uh, the background, a small difference in the virtual background or the real background is going to have a huge impact in terms of your uh, pr presentation there. So some investments as I close this presentation that I think are worthwhile considering for you. Start with the humble checklist. All right, as an ex-hotelier, I love checklists. Leave nothing to chance. Did we check the internet speed? Did we do all that? Have a checklist now because the onus is on us. Earlier, I used to send it to my, speak uh, my speakers bureau or my clients, a huge checklist, and now we have an internal checklist. Start with a checklist, leave nothing to chance. Find a co-host, please. Right? Somebody who can assist you on important meetings like Chirag is doing for me right now, they do not need to be in the same room as you, but it'll take a lot of burden off your shoulder for important presentations. Mentimeter, great tool, you've used it today. A dedicated internet connection if you are a frequent uh, streamer or if you are a professional presenter. Please remember your upload speed is more important than your download speed. You could have great download speeds, but if your upload speed is horrible, you will not send out a good quality video signal. That's very important. Elgato Stream Deck. Chirag will share the link in the chat box. This little thing here that I'm using right now with programmable buttons, okay? Uh, very, very cool. Once you get used to it, it is very helpful in terms of uh, you know, taking a lot of burden off your shoulders. Ecamm Live is the software, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm, I'm giving away all my secrets here. Huh? So <laughs> Ecamm Live Pro is the streaming software that I'm using right now that enables me to play videos, have this presentation side by side, and so many other cool things like my logo, timer, a professional microphone. Um, we have not installed the new one that we bought, but I'm using the Zoom H1 which I had just for as a USB mic, which is the oldest that is available out there. I had it for several years, and I did not know I could use it as a USB mic. The Zoom H1 retails for about $9,900, around that figure, and it's a traditional recorder, a note taker for journalists, but it's also an excellent USB mic as well, which is what I'm currently using. Uh, it's an average mic, but the sound is pretty decent because of the proximity effect. Please understand in getting good quality sound, and I believe good quality sound is better than, um, is more important than good quality video, right? Do you agree with that statement? You could have an average video, but you need very good quality sound, and to get that, the proxi proximity effect is, is to keep, like, my, my mic right now is very close. It's just like a couple of inches away from my chin. And that is really important. Check the gain level on your mic, please, so that you're not there is no you're not throwing out the plosives, as they say. Um, and get, become an expert. You know, <laughs> just just take a deep dive into all these things. This is the new thing here to stay. Take a deep dive. Learn from people outside the field, not necessarily fellow speakers, but gamers. I learned a lot from gamers and streamers because they use all this equipment to play these video games online. So I learned a lot from them. Investing in a DSLR camera, which I'm using right now, is a great investment in the long run, but we started with my built-in camera from my MacBook Pro. So start with what you have, don't buy all the gear in one go, incorporate it, see how it works, and then improve. A dedicated separate PC for streaming, again, is going to be very helpful if that is what, uh, uh, it will really improve your game. As I close and throw it open for questions, please remember, number one, keep experimenting. Take a deep breath in, please, inhale. I will, I'm a work in progress and I will keep experimenting. That's number one. Can somebody read number two, please? Keep raising the bar. Keep raising the bar. Practice what the uh, Japanese say, kaizen. And kaizen is this. It means continuous improvement. Number three, remember the world needs you now more than ever before. Number four, remember neuroplasticity is here to help you. Regardless of your age or your previous experience, your Neural structures can change only if you say yes to new challenges. You can 
your, your brain changes in harmony with the challenges that you accept. So say yes to new challenges. Say yes to that learning, okay? And the next one is things become easier with time. I can vouch for that from a personal um, experience. All of these tools, I used to be like, my brain is getting fried doing all these multitasking, these double screens, all, all of these things. And now as I've done it several number of times, it becomes way more easier to say yes to those speaking opportunities. Say yes to checking out your new mic, your new camera, you know, this new Mentimeter tool. That's, there is no other way out. There is no theoretical way to improve your virtual game. You must do it by experience, as I'm sure we have learned other skills as well. Here's a further learning resource, a short video that we created on change management, dealing with change. Chirag will share the link with you. And over to my friend uh, Naresh, who's been flashing red for quite some time. <laughs> Open to questions now. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I know this was short and I had to pack in a lot, but I, I really appreciate you listening to this. Thank you. Over to, over to your questions. Wonderful speech. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful Thank you. Speech. Simerji, thank you. You knocked Thanks, it out of the park. You. You, gave, you gave us so much information to improve ourselves, our speeches. Amazing. At thank you, Ron. Time, yes. And at this time, we're going to take advantage of the Q and A. It, mm -hmm. Coincidentally, you answered some questions that we were possibly going to ask you. But let us uh, see who has a question for Mr. Simerjeet. Naresh, please go ahead, sir. Okay, so my question is it I saw your presentation. There was a PowerPoint uh -huh. slide on one side uh -huh. and you were on the other side. So how do you do that, basically, side right. by side? So uh, I'm using the Elgato Stream Deck to shuffle between I could do this, I could go full frame, I could have the presentation, uh, just a touch of one button, I could go back and forth in my presentation. And uh, uh, this is through Ecamm, Naresh, Ecamm, the software. Uh, and the pro subscription I, for Mac users only. For Windows users, there's another good software which I haven't personally used. It's called OBS, uh, Open Broadcasting Software. Pretty good. All these new softwares, uh, I tell you, they're worthwhile in terms of the time and energy they lost from you in, in learning these. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm sure uh, they'll really help you in terms of getting your logo on, um, timers, presentations, videos, it's a more engaging audiovisual experience for your team. So the answer to your question, Naresh, is it's through a tool called Ecamm Pro and also in combination with the Stream Deck that I'm using right now, which allows me to shuffle. I could go to my this camera, which is to show people around in the studio, or I could have multiple cameras, uh, all at the touch of a button, uh, very easy. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that uh, very wonderful answer. Anyone else with a question for our keynote speaker? Uh, I have a question. I okay, noticed you, you threw a lot of things at us, and I'm really, um, I was really captivated by a lot of the things that you mentioned. But I'm kind of new at doing videos, and I was wondering, uh, do you have a book uh, um, out, or do you have some sort of manual out? that could help us, you know, better navigate through this stuff. And not at the moment, Cecilia, but I'll be seriously considering this after the interview, uh, after the invitation came from Serena, I thought, okay, wow, you know, we've done all this in the last 16 months, but we haven't shared and transferred knowledge for this particular domain. So yes, one of the resources that we'll be jumping into very soon, Cecilia, and for the benefit of others, is um, Clubhouse. We will start a room on Clubhouse shortly on how to master your virtual game. And we will, I'll share perhaps a link with Serena and she can share with the others. You're welcome to join, uh, but there, there is not a book at the moment, but um, Clubhouse, yes, we'll do that. We created a few more videos on this. Um, Chirag will share the link and uh, a few others as well. Je Jeffrey's asking, what is my checklist? Uh, check housekeeping, basically, to begin with, uh, such as, um, you know, sometimes the modem needs a reboot. Um, to do that first thing in the morning, checking internet upload, download speed, uh, power backup. I'm using a Mac mini. I'm not using a laptop. So that needs to have instant power backup, um, those sort of things, my notes and other things. So it's just with the team. Everybody knows um, isolating outside sound, so sh closing all doors and windows, all those little details, which when, when you're presenting, you could be in the moment just to ensure when you're with your audience, there is nothing that is bothering you. Uh, so that's what my checklist is. Um, clubhouse, name of our clubhouse room. Um, yes, we'll share that with you. We haven't started it yet, but in next week, that's on the agenda. 
everybody's on Clubhouse. I'm not sure how, how many people in the US, but in India, everybody's listening, tuning into Clubhouse. It's the thing at the moment. Thank you, Simajit. Do we, Odette, did I see your hand up with a question? Yes, um, my question is, you, first of all, I, I loved your presentation. Um, Thanks, Odette. <laughs> you indicated dedicated Mac PC for streaming. Does that uh -huh. mean a dedicated laptop for streaming or what, what, what exactly, what kind of equipment? I would prefer a Mac Mini or a desktop as opposed to a laptop, just because uh, on the laptop they heat heat up pretty soon. Where these softwares are power hungry, and when you're running Ecamm Live and a couple of other softwares, you're plugging in a DSLR, then your laptop fans are going to kick in very soon, and that will create the additional noise in the room which you do not want. Um, and also, the I find particularly the Mac M1 Mini to be a very good um, resource for streaming as, a, as opposed to the laptop. Uh, more processing power and built for this purpose. So yeah, definitely desktop or Mac mini as opposed to a laptop. Fantastic, thank you so much. Wonderful Cheers. tips, wonderful tips. Who else has a question for Simerjeet? I have another yeah. question. Um, sure. Cecilia? Yeah, I, I know this is going to sound stupid, but do you, okay, do you ever, okay, because you're on video, do uh -huh. you ever have like somebody come in and do kind of like a makeup artist type thing, you know, like on you, or do you just come in and look the way you do and, you know, I I've guess heard that question. it helps. <laughs> no, that's a great yes. question and, and relevant too because when you're using a 4K camera, the amount of detail it's going exactly. to uh, bring on the screen could be scary at times. So, yes. you know, when I go for TV or appearances or when we do YouTube video, when TV appearances, they have this, you got to go to the makeup room regardless you want to do it or not and they put a little exactly. foundation on. I don't do it for keynotes um, as much, but it all depends upon, you know, things like your lighting, uh, your skin type and how comfortable you are. Um, exactly. I don't care. I don't care much. But if you're sensitive about these things, yes, please, it will make a difference because when these LED lights are lighting up all corners of your face and with a 4K camera is going to be an incredible amount of detail and you want to go with what you're comfortable with. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you both. We have time for one more question. Who is the lucky person going to be? Let's do it. Who is that lucky person? Luckily, we have this beautiful presentation recorded. Do I see Jeannie Tang? Jeannie, go yes, ahead with your Je question. Um, my name is Gina, and Hi, I Gina. wanted to find out, I did scan my camera on your QR code, and you have so many social media platforms on there. Which are the top three that you would recommend for those that are just starting with all this virtual platforms? Okay, great question. Now we use a tool which is called Linktree, where you pay, uh, there's a free plan, there's a paid plan, but that with a single link and a single QR code, you could put in all your social media uh, handles on there like we are doing right now. And we have several of them, which you know, many of them not even required to be there, but since we have the option, we have a paid plan, so we put it there just in case. Many of them are links to our podcast. And by the way, very interesting thing, remember I told you start with what you have? Our podcast touched, crossed 1 million listens very recently. We can do uh, that for that, <laughs> which was unexpected. Thank you. And what we did was we did not create a custom design podcast as such. It is just the audio of all my YouTube videos. We put the audio out as a podcast. So what I'm saying is you could be sitting on a diamond mine. If you've already created content, think about what influencers call repurposing. Okay, how you can put it out in a different medium. Now, coming back to your question, Gina, is uh, my top three, I, I don't go by what's trending at the moment. If I were to, which people keep telling me, go for Clubhouse or go for Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. YouTube is not that happening anymore. I don't follow those trends as much because they keep changing all the time. I pick um, all of our traffic, all of our subscribers are organic. We've never paid for any advertisement or for getting more subscribers. Um, so. I would say the only factor that helps me decide is how can this message get to the maximum number of people? I'll give you an example. The podcast uh, audios uh, is being, we're distributing it through Spotify. Spotify has a service called Anchor, 
which distributes your podcast for free to some of the major podcast platforms across the world, including Apple Podcasts and uh, Google, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But here's the thing: since our company is registered in India. Spotify does not allow Indian content creators to monetize their podcast so far. So after a million listens, we have zero dollars in earning, okay? But which I'm okay with because as long as the message is getting out to the audience, you know, someday that's going to change, and that's not what is driving us at the moment. What is driving us is we need to get our message out to the widest, uh, num biggest audience possible. Um, so yeah, my my deciding factor always is how can we serve and add value. To people in different parts of the world, trends they keep changing all the time. Thank you so much, Simerji. I don't Cheers, know Ron. what to say, but we have to have you back, and we absolutely need you for for a keynote, like Jenna said, for a much longer period of time because you have so much more. It's almost like a fire hydrant of knowledge and wisdom that you want to share with us in <laughs> the virtual world, and Thank we you. truly, truly appreciate it. Those deep breaths. We're absolutely mm -hmm. amazing, especially after the gym today. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> They're primarily for me to help me stay centered and to stay in the moment. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always great if the audience joins in too. Thank you so much, all of you wonderful people. It was a pleasure being here. And thanks, Serena. And thank you. Thank, thank you, Samarji. No, and you're namaste. welcome to stay. I'm not sure what time it is there, but you're more than welcome to stay. And we thank you so much. Thank you. I'll hang around for a while. Thank you, Ron. And thank thanks, you, Marcia. Thank, thank you, everybody. Cheers.